Hi everyone! So I've been hanging out in this restaurant called Agasa Jasmine in San Cristobal and Abdul who works there wants to take us to his parents ranch today to show us what they harvest, how they harvest it, where it is and so on and I am very very excited to share the entire day with you guys. I'm in the supermarket now getting some orange juice and water and chips for guacamole and then I'll go to the um, open market mercado and uh, get some fresh fruit and vegetable. I tried to fit this giant bag of tortillas into my bag and I broke the zip. Annoying. So I got some fresh vegetables, uh, stuff for guacamole, salad. This is Abdul, our host. Salud. Salud. <laughs> <laughs> he said that we didn't get any meat. <laughs> This town is the huggiest town I've ever been in. Everybody hugs all the time. When we meet, when we say goodbye, when we eat, before we eat, after we eat, morning, night, doesn't matter. Everybody maybe hugs. Do you think it's the town or maybe it's the people? Being people, here. yeah, I, yeah, people in town. Both. Both. Okay. <laughs> yeah. I'm hugging this bench. I wasn't <laughs> yes. even aware of that. Some fresh coconut, all peeled and ready to drink and eat. Wow. Okay. It's really good. Muy rico. Getting into Colectivo, which is a local bus. We're loading the roof with the corn. Interesting. What's very vegetable? Mine, definitely. We are eight of us and there are two people in there, but we're gonna try our best to fit in. somewhere in Asia I mean, I've never been in Asia but from the pictures <laughs> that's what it looks like you know tall rounded mountains I love banana trees unfortunately where I come from bananas never get ripe because it's not a tropical weather but my plant obsessed grandma would still have couple plants and when I was a kid bananas would get like these tiny tiny and be obviously green and never ripe and it would be the end of the season like September or something and I would never have a chance to have a ripe banana from my backyard. I know Abdul has a couple of banana plants and maybe I get to eat them. Uh, if you don't know, I live in New York. Oh my God, I'm out of breath. Mexican food is very famous there, probably one of the most famous. And then what I noticed is that in Mexico, they don't really eat that much rice. And in America, rice and beans is a very big thing like when they serve burrito or taco or whatever they always have rice and beans pretty much mixed on the side honestly it's never the case here in mexico i don't know it's where did they go oh my god so did they take this road <laughs> that road or that road i have no idea guys hello shit i can't hear them oh sorry i'm coming there they are. <laughs> oh, gracias. <laughs> Let's 
like I said, this place is definitely more tropical than the place where I grew up or I would spend most of my summers. But it definitely reminds me of my grandparents' little village where I would spend, you know, at least like three months of a year. It was very lush like this. So a lot of beans and cones, a lot of trees, a lot of mandarins and tangerines and oranges sometimes. <laughs> but yeah, it's really fun to be in a place very far away from home that reminds you of your birthplace. And I'm gonna jump on this. <laughs> All right, this is a little bit of a hike, honestly. Look at these coffee beans. Oh my God. Hay muchos cafetales en Chiapas, sí. Sí. Es una de las regiones más importantes cafetaleras de México. Ah, sí. Chiapas. Ajá. Ah, no Chiapas, Tabasco, Oaxaca. Sí. Veracruz también. Pero Chiapas es, creo que la más grande. Sí. Veracruz y Chiapas. Sí. Long beans. Come on. I'm not expecting it to be so beautiful. Yeah, me neither. Yeah, it's like, look at this. This is not a regular boring farm. <laughs> I really don't know if you can see how beautiful this place is from the video, but this is probably the lushest <laughs> and most remote place I've ever been here in Mexico and it feels great. We're here. Okay. We're here. Estás cansada? Yes. See? It gets very hot. Wow. De aquí, ¿cómo traen los maíces a la ciudad? Bueno, nosotros lo llevamos cargando con what happens is that when they harvest um, uh, beans and corn, they use these kind of things and really big bags or um, wooden baskets to carry all the stuff all the way to the town, which is, believe me, a very, very hard work. <laughs> So I asked all these guys why they travel and I gave them some time to come up with a very short answer because people on YouTube do not like to listen to long answers. Okay, I'll start because they are shy. I think I travel because I am one single human being and I don't have many answers of many questions and I like to know how other cultures and yeah, how other cultures figure their life out. Basically. Put your pants on. <laughs> Shut up. That's all. He ruined my moment. <laughs> Definitely. Like he always does. That's why I travel. <laughs> That's my answer. <laughs> <laughs> to ruin other people's years. <laughs> uh, I travel because I am able to meet people from other countries and we're all exploring the same new space at the same time. I don't know where to look. Right. Yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. We're, we're exploring like together just a place we've never been possibly a language we've never spoken and just learning together and I think I wouldn't have been able to learn it to this degree if I had just stayed in my home country Do you speak a lot of languages? I speak six and a half and like it really gives me so much joy like to, to learn new languages and it's like to look yeah, to look through a different window, like to look on things like on, on, on the world, like in a different way. And that really fascinates me. I think there's so many ways to live your life and so many 
ways to experience life and mm -hmm. when I travel I get to see how other people live, how other people experience life, how other people love, how other people share, how other people connect, so that's why. Nice. I love to travel because I love to see other people's culture and then I love to share my own culture because mm -hmm. not a lot of people know about Indonesian and especially as Javanese there's so much similarities between everyone and we didn't realize because so we saw ignorance and I think it's nice to just be somewhere else and share your own things yeah that's yeah. it beautiful that applies to me too because nobody knows about Georgia and wherever I go I usually represent my country yeah and for like eight out of ten people I'm the first Georgian who they meet so that's very beautiful yeah and yeah usually I'm also the first Indonesian yeah. they meet <laughs> and then always like that and they don't even know what is Indonesia they only know Bali and it's so sad for me because mm. Indonesia is huge and big and lovely yeah yeah just sad yeah. <laughs> I get it. Thank you so much. Mi sueño más importante sí. es que tanto como tú y como ellos, mm -hmm. los chicos, sean felices. Ah, sí. Sí. Ese es mi sueño importante. ¿Algo otro? Ya lo demás es cosa que viene y cosa que se va. Speaking about cultural exchange and sharing your culture to other people, I wanted to say that in uh, my language, in Georgian, a friend is megobari and uh, gobi means a bow. And they say that the etymology of the world is that megobari is a person that you share food from one bowl with. I think that speaks a lot about the culture. I personally love to share my food a lot. And then um, I remember the first kind of like a shock for me in America was that everybody in a restaurant orders their own food. We do absolutely opposite in Georgia. One person orders for the entire um, uh, table and then we all share the food. This kind of little experience is like absolute sharing with everybody is very important and very sweet. And I think that humans need that, honestly. I don't want to like judge American culture too much. There are tons of things that I appreciate in New York, but I think that like that food sharing culture is something that I usually miss and I still do it with my friends but in general I lack that living there um today's experience I mean what did I do just made a quick guacamole took me like 15 minutes to make it but um it's beautiful like knowing that people appreciated what you did and then reciprocating it's it's really beautiful especially in this magical kind of place now I'm gonna try to make a short video without any music on it and try to listen to the nature because that's what i'm trying right now and let's do it together This fruit is guanabana, uh, soursop. It's not ripe yet, but they say it's very rich with nutrients and vitamins and water as well. <laughs> like all the other fruits are. Well, hold on. I'm taking some lemongrass home to make some tea. Today's not the day to camp out here. That was the original plan, but Abdul has to work early in the morning tomorrow. And then the last bus leaves at 6 p.m. For some people, this day might sound like a normal day. Like you, oh my God, get the hell out of here. <laughs> Look at this guy making fun of me because I make videos and then asks me to edit his video. They're talking about the bathroom. This is the most spacious bathroom we've ever been to. It's really beautiful. <laughs> oh, wow. We didn't even have to cut it. Listo. <laughs> Listo. 
con Juan me conoce toda mi familia, con madre, padre, hermanos, la mayoría. Ajá. Y como Abdul, pues todos mis amigos me conocen con ese nombre, Abdul. Adopté ese nombre cuando me convertí en musulmán. Lado sur de San Cristóbal, soy el único persona que es musulmán. Uh -huh. <ríe> sí, y con ese nombre raro y todos preguntan, ¿eres indígena? Sí. ¿Cuál es tu nombre, Abdul? Es muy raro. Tu nombre uh -huh. es... Uh -huh. Todos quedan muy... Yeah. And that's, uh, that, that's where you guys met, right? In the mosque. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Beautiful. They met in the mosque, then they opened the restaurant, and we're here now. <laughs> Cutting bananas, lemongrass up in the wild. Yeah, that's what we do. Cool. <laughs> Muchas gracias para todo, huh? Gracias a ti, Diana. <laughs> here are the bananas. The bananas that would never get ripe back in my country. Why not? It's uh, never the right temperature. Bye bye, beautiful nature. <laughs> Thank you for having us. Wow. Oh wow, there's a papaya tree. Uh oh. Somebody just knocked down the entire tree. Maria Fernina. <laughs> ¿Es uh, un plátano o una banana? Es una banana. Una banana. Plátano no, no son plátanos, son bananas. So this family promised us that they were going to pick us up and bring us down to another town where we can take another colectivo to San Cristobal. And we're just standing here waiting for them. I think one of the things that I like about Abdul is that he has five or four jobs and he has to wake up super early in the morning, work physically, mentally as well, and I'm pretty sure that he gets exhausted, but um, he never complains about it, and he accepts that life, and he pretty much cherishes that he has an opportunity to work and uh, earn money and be independent. And um, I'm not sure if he knows a lot about Stoicism and Stoic philosophy, but uh, their main idea pretty much was that no matter what kind of physical challenges you have, and no matter what kind of uh, physical physical consequences you have to face, uh, the most important aspect of the peaceful life is to be mindful and um, just appreciate what you have and uh, work with that uh, rather than uh, complaining about this or that, just appreciate your surrounding and grow out of it as much as you can and I think he gets it. That's inspiring, I'd say. It really is. Since I get car sickness, I get to sit here. <laughs> I'm back in town and I got some bananas. They are very, very raw, but I'm gonna make some chips tomorrow and then keep a couple of them out there to get ripe and probably in two or three weeks <laughs> they'll be ready to eat. I had a beautiful day today. Uh, my camera died and my video got cut, but to continue the same thought, I just wanted to say that maybe for some people uh, it might sound like I had a normal day, you know, I took a bus, I hiked a little bit, I cooked some food, I hung out with people, like what's abnormal about it, right? But. It was an unusual day. Um, being so far away from home or anything that you are familiar with and being so comfortable with the people that you barely know makes you feel like you are the citizen of the world, you know? And that's a very beautiful uh, feeling. Also, being in the place where people don't have pretty much the basic things that the rest of the world has right now, which is internet, Wi-Fi, phone service, electricity, and them still be happy about what they have is an interesting thought to resonate to. Simple life can make you happier. That's the thought that I definitely have to think about and maybe work on that. Um, I am genuinely happy for Abdul's uh, hospitality and the people who drove us and for you because you're watching this video and you're supporting me. If you came so far and if you're new to my channel, I would really appreciate if you hit that like button and subscribe um, and support my very newbie YouTube channel. Uh, have a beautiful day or night, everybody, uh, whichever time zone you are in. And I really hope I'm gonna see you next week in the next video. Bye-bye. Or should I say adios? <laughs>